Welcome to Breadboarding. In the previous video we got the CGA compatible video controller built on breadboards here working in graphics modes and we fixed one interference issue which was happening all the time. In this video we're going to be adding the 40 by 25 video mode, fixing some issues with the CGA graphics modes and we're running a number of DOS based utilities to verify the fixes and test the video controller for CGA compatibility. So this is video 57 in the Breadboard 8088 PC series and this is the 12th part of the CGA video controller part of the project. Now CGA video controller is an important step for us being able to run an early version of Windows, Windows 1.0, 2.0 on our Breadboard PC. So if we take a look, this is a screenshot of the 40 by 25 test pattern I showed earlier in the first lot of tests and this was obviously only taking up uh, half the screen width because we were still running it at the full VGA frequencies. Now when I had um, made the changes necessary to the clock PLD to implement this, this is what I first saw. So you'll see that uh, it is a little confusing. It's basically got most of the things there but a lot of the colours and the attributes are all mixed up. Now I started to look into this and when I was actually investigating it, this was actually the text as it appeared in the in the full VGA test pattern. And then these are all the bits that went wrong when I did the 40 character wide mode. So to cut a long story short, when looking at the logic analyzer here, what it was related to is that the attribute latch low to high transition here is when the latch loads the attribute data. And what actually was happening is that the boundary between the, the current character's attribute and the next character's attribute was very, very close. And in fact, it's also the case on this one as well. And if we zoom into it, what you can see is that this boundary here was falling from the 0F there onto the 08. And it's one of the reasons why the character were showing the wrong attribute value. And similarly, this other one here that rather than showing the 08, which would have been the same colour as the that it was expected to be, it was actually showing 09. So by modifying the clock timing, then we're able to eliminate that. And then this is then showing that after those changes, you can see here that the latch signal here is now falling within the 0F rather than a little bit later. And similarly over here, it's falling in the 08 period. So this seems to resolve the problem. And this is now what the 40 column mode looks like. There's still the odd stray character appearing. So the stray characters appearing in the video output, I still need to look into in more detail, but I've fixed the majority of the other issues that we've got here. There's also some issues in that the test utilities I was using didn't seem to be able to determine the status register and the CRTC registers were, were showing and I did a bit of investigation and if we look at the status register you can see that of the bits we've got here bit 0 and bit 3 are the ones we're really interested in bit 1 and bit 2 are always set to one's tied to ground the other's tied to 1 or 5 volts now the values you would expect to get back from the status register would be F4 when both bit 0 and 3 are low, F5 when we get bit 0 high, and FD when bit 0 and bit 3 are high. So bit 0 will go high at the end of each line on horizontal sync, but bit 3 will still be low. And then at the end of a page, when we're on the vertical refresh period, then both bit 0 and bit 3 will go high. We'll never have bit 3 high without bit 0. But we should never have FF. We should never have any of the, all of the bits being set because one of these is in fact tied to ground. So we should never see FF. However, when I looked at the logic analyzer output, so I did a part of the test program that I've got, just polled the status register for a, a loop for a period of time. And when it was polling the status register, we can see here CGA status is low. It's returning FF. And that didn't look right. And what it turned out to be is that the rule that I had for the buffer output enable was actually incorrect. And it was okay for writes, but for reads, it was incorrect. So I modified that. When I next ran the test, you can see here the 
The two lines down the bottom here are bit zero and bit three. So this is the two signals we're looking at. You can see here we've got F4 there, which is when both of them are zero. Then we've got F5 when this first one is one and the other one zero. And then we've got FD when both of them are selected. So that appeared to fix that issue. And it's also fixed some of the other problems that I was seeing in the test utilities where it wasn't able to detect the CGA card properly. Now, one of the most confusing issues I had when looking at the four color mode, the test pattern I was using, I was using this sort of byte test pattern, which had black, green, red, brown repeating across the screen. But what I was finding when I actually uh, was just setting one byte within a number of black bytes here, as you can see on the right hand side, but you can see that it didn't actually come out in the right order. So they kind of shifted around. Now this took quite a while to get to the bottom of, but now what we'll find is when we run the four color mode and we see the text and things like that, then all of the problems I was having with that have now been resolved. We still have got the random updates occurring during some periods of refreshing the screen. And I will be looking to that later, but uh, we won't have time to do that in this video. So I think pretty much all of the issues are resolved apart from this sort of random updating of the screen from time to time. And so what I'm going to do now is to go back and run the first test program that I showed you, the one that I've written and just show how that looks now. And then we'll go and have a look at the other two DOS test utilities to see what the output from them looks like. So let's switch to the video capture and just run the test program. OK, so you can see we've got our blank screen now with the cursor flashing at the top and there don't seem to be any random characters appearing. We still get it occasionally, but uh, not, not so often as I was before. So this is our text mode test pattern. We still have got these sort of random updates down the bottom here and we've got our blinking. Then the next test is actually polling the status register for a, a little while. So there won't be anything obvious to see on the screen, but this was allowing me to um, test the status register with the logic analyzer output that you saw earlier. Now this is the 40 by 25 graphics mode here, and you can see that all the attributes and things now coming out better. There are the still occasional random stray characters around, but the format of this is much closer to what we'd expect. And the four color mode here, I've got a screenshot of this. And if we just have a quick look at the screenshot, we go to the top left corner and it's sort of magnified quite a lot. You can see now that there is actually a thin black, green, red, brown, black, green, red, brown. Obviously, the JPEG format of this means that it is a little bit blurred on the edges, but it does now appear to be coming out in the right order. And when we look at some of the other DOS test utilities, you'll see that some of the problems that we're having with the output are now being resolved. And if we quickly go through all the various color combinations and the different color palettes, I have now disabled the black and white mode. I was finding that um, some of the test utilities and in fact the Sergei Kislev's BIOS was actually setting the black and white attribute in some of the modes, which was actually meaning that we weren't getting quite the output we'd expect because a CGA digital monitor would ignore any of the black and white uh, configuration. Then I figured it's probably better to see what a CGA digital monitor would see rather than the composite TV. And then this is the high res with this is sort of an alternating pixels in green. And that was then completed. So now what we're going to do is to just have a look at the changes that we needed to make in the BIOS. So in the BIOS have needed to modify the timings here. So originally when we did the MDA card, there was only one set of timings here. Now we've got all these timings, including now the CGA 40 by 25 mode is now being tweaked to actually work properly there. And they've also then included something to do with the modes here. Modes actually is how we set the various flags and things for graphics mode, the video enable, 640 by 200 graphics, high res, black and white and all that sort of stuff. So I've modified the mode that comes with the BIOS by default and turned off one or two options to make it work better with this card. So the BIOS has been updated and now seems to be working a lot better. So now if we boot to DOS. So now I'm going to run up the CT tool. Now the first one I want to do 
when we look at the options on here there is actually a test so if you do ct test this now detects that we've got a cga 6845 card okay that we've got a monochrome card as well and that the active card is cga 80 by 25 when i did this earlier then it wasn't detecting the cga 6845 card because of some of the problems with the buffer and the uh, io read not being configured properly so if you just have a look at some of these modes again i won't do every one because some of them are the same so ct0 this is our 40 character mode and you can see now that 40 character is now full screen there we do mode 2 which is the text mode again that's now working properly there's a, a lot fewer uh, corrupted characters appearing now but it still occasionally happens particularly on some of the graphics modes but not so much on this one we look at the four color graphics mode we do get the video snow during the updates of the the video memory and there are a few random stray bits there but now the text is much cleaner you can see now the text is quite visible and if we go through all the various colors high intensity different color palettes intensity color palettes then the direct right space is just um, avoiding the bios and directly updating the video hardware the fact that this all works indicates it's fairly compatible and if we now look at the high res graphics mode the colors now working and the direct rights are also working as well so that was that utility now the other one that i wanted to show you thought until i'd fixed all the issues there wasn't much point in showing you this one but cga comp is a very clever bit of software it's got lots and lots of tests now originally it wasn't completing all the tests but it's now doing the majority of the tests so if you have a real monitor connected you could damage your monitor in some cases but uh, in our case we should be okay so these tests are arranged into cj compatibility test patterns for calibrating a monitor patterns which are more for calibrating video capture so the video capture card i'm using here there was also some video ram speed benchmarks which uh, weren't working originally but they are now so i'm just going to go through these i'll probably speed up quite a lot of it and i'll only comment when there's actually something particularly interesting to mention so the border overscan color there is a test here that we can run but it doesn't show anything because the monitors that i'm using and the vga capture card don't actually show any of the overscan areas so we don't see anything here the medium res background now just shows lots of different colors and the cross lines there are now actually looking okay there's just a few random updates res foreground is now working and the medium res palettes are working as well as i said there's just a few random updates so i think that's all the color select then we've got text mode so the 40 column display probably isn't quite as nice as the test pattern i've got doesn't really show the attributes working but um test works anyway the high color text mode so we've got our blinking working and we've got the different colors and backgrounds cursor control now does work however because the as i mentioned earlier because the characters here are made up of 16 vga lines when the cursor is positioned at the bottom of the CGA character, it's only really at position uh, seven really, rather than 15. So uh, I need to look at a way of uh, addressing that. You can see the upside down cursors at the top, full blocked uh, cursor is only half the character now. It's only eight out of the 16 lines and this last two ones don't work anyway. CGA snow is just going to show a region on the screen that if the adapter is susceptible to snow then this will show it you can see this sort of uh, region here is the effect of the CPU accessing the video RAM at the same time that the CRTC is accessing it in future video I'll look at seeing if we can actually eliminate that and finally the font display shows the different characters so if we type in an x here you can see here the character to the left in that little box there little x matches the thin one and that's because we've enabled the thin fonts by default i can change a jumper setting on the board and it will use the 
thicker fonts, but I think the thin ones look a little better at the moment. So that's all the text mode. So now the 6845 compatibility. So some of these actually work surprising well, given that this is working at VGA frequencies and not CGA frequencies, then some of these do actually now work. They work a lot better than I was expecting. Now this is not detecting the 70 hertz refresh rate. The refresh is actually 70 hertz, but it, I suspect it's expecting it to be close to 60. And so this is not quite right. Horizontal retrace will result in some output. So if we see these moving horizontal color bars that indicates that the CRTC is in fact emulating a 6845 properly, that's because it is a 6845 derivative from Hitachi. Row reprogramming shows the high color low res graphics mode. So this is 160 by 100, but does allow up to 16 colors. Sample graphic as well, showing what it's capable of. Row column reprogramming. This can show, tries to show 90 by 30, but um, that doesn't work. This, this one works, but the 90 by 30 won't. Interlace video, video mode is not really worth while I'm looking at. Display positioning will move the display around in, in by varying the vertical sync and horizontal sync. So this actually works. So you can see that the screen here is actually moving to the left up and down. And star stress reprogramming allows to scroll vertically and horizontally by changing the offset address that the CRTC uses for the video RAM. You can see it vertically scrolling and horizontally scrolling. So that's all of the compatibility. So there's very little that it isn't compatible with apart from the position of the cursor, then everything else is pretty good. Then these ones I'm going to go through quite quickly. This one particularly exhibits uh, the problems with the random updates. It's quite a good test pattern. It certainly shows that the high res two color modes working quite nicely. And finally the calibration ones. This shows the moving lines, but these other artifacts, obviously, from the sort of accidental updates are causing a problem. But uh, this should be quite a good one to test whether or not we fix this in the future video. It's a very simple calibration. Red, green, blue and white. And then finally camera calibration. If you're taking photographs of a monitor, this helps with calibrating that. And finally, there's some video RAM benchmarks, so block memory read. So we can see that the RAM that we've got here, because we don't have any weight states, then it seems to be running about uh, twice the speed of the original IBM PC. Writes, again, working about twice as fast. And then this interleave one is perhaps about 50% uh, faster. So that was all of those sort of tests, those two test utilities. I'll include the details in the description, the video below. There's one final test I was doing as well is that uh, can actually run uh, basic, GW basic. And there are some samples provided with early versions of PC DOS. They are very simple and probably one of the most limited games that has ever been written. So if you look at art first, this uses some of the four color mode line drawing. So you can see the CGA snow there. If you look at the circles, these are useful because if we wanted to write our own test programs, we could modify these and actually make, it's got all the commands we need to actually 
do graphics tests here, so it's quite useful to use these as a basis for other tests. Donkey is a very limited game. We just use left and right keys to get the donkey to avoid. It's not quite working because the can't actually see the donkey. Ball. Colour bar. And finally space again is just a bit of random drawing on the screen with a spaceship. So not very exciting, but the sample programs would be useful to base future test utilities and things on. Then to get out of basic, you actually need to type system, which if you do go into basic, it can be a little confusing to get out of that. So I think we've been able to prove here that our CGA VGA sort of composite card, so CGA compatible, but produces VGA output. We can say that it's, it's pretty compatible actually based on the test utilities we've been. There's a few issues still to resolve, in particular the random updates that seem to be occurring to the screen memory under some circumstances, but I'll look into that over the coming week. At, uh, for the moment, I think things are looking good enough that I can start to look at what we need to do to get the mouse driver working and also installing Windows 1.0 and 2.0. So if you don't want to miss out on future videos, please hit subscribe. And if you found the content interesting, please hit like. It just helps to make the videos available to more people. Thanks for watching.